Welcome, Algebra 2 students. This is the first of many videos brought to you by your friendly neighborhood math teacher, Mr. Halp. This is Lesson 1.1, and we're going to be talking about parent functions and transformations. Hang on tight. On this slide, folks, we're looking at parent functions, and there's just four of them here to start with, very basic, and they should actually look pretty uh, familiar to you. So we call each one of the parent functions is part of what we call a family of functions. And we'll get more into this throughout the year. So don't worry too much about it now. So I have the family name. So for the first one, we have constant. Then we have linear and absolute value and quadratic. Then we have a rule. And our rules are always going to be written in function notation. So you'll see for the constant, it's f of x equals b. I'll show you what a graph of it looks like. And then we'll talk about domain and range. Let's hold there for just a second. Domain and range, remember. Domain is the collection of all of the x values that you can plug into the equation and actually end up with a good answer. The range are all of the possible output values the function actually has. So if you plug in all the x values, what are all the y values you're going to get out? And that will be the range. So let's go back and talk about our constant function. So f of x equals b. Okay, it doesn't have to be b. It could be like any number you want it to be. We just use b for a very specific reason, but that's not important why we use the letter b. Um, instead, let's pretend it's a number like 2. So this tells me that f of x is equal to 2. Well, if I think about a table of values, right? My table of values, my x, y, remember, y is just a fancy, or f of x is just a fancy way of writing y. So my f of x is always equal to 2. That means no matter what the x value is, the y value is always 2. So my uh, x values, let's go from negative 2 to positive 2. And if x is equal to negative 2, since f of x is always equal to 2, eh, I got negative 2, 2. So that could be this coordinate pair right here, negative 2, comma 2. Then I got negative 1, comma 2, right? Because my y value is always equal to 2 in this equation. That could be this point right here, 0, 2. That could be this one, 1, 2, 2, 2. Okay, if it was three, it would be the same thing, except all the y values would be three, we change it. So what x values work in this equation? All real numbers. Every single number you can think of could be a possible x value, but the range is the only the y value we selected in this problem, two. But again, whatever number you start with. Let's take a look at the linear equation. Linear equation, the very basic function is f of x equals x. So if you think back to Algebra 1, this would be an equation with the slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0, if we were thinking about it in terms of Algebra 1 stuff. Okay, but let's think about it in a table of values. So that's here. We'll go from negative 2 to positive 2, uh, incrementing by 1. And let's hear f of x is equal to x. That means the y value is always the same as the x value. So if the x value is negative 2, the y value is negative 2. So the coordinate pair would be negative 2, negative 2. Negative 1, the y value would be the same, negative 1. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. And we've created our graph. So let's think about this. The x values, any x value will work in this equation. So the range is all real numbers. And since the x value equals, or the y value equals the x value, then the range is also all real numbers. All right, let's go on. Let's go on and look at the absolute value graph. Now, if you remember from that activity we did on the first day of class, you will know that the absolute value graph always makes the values positive. So if we number from negative two to two for our x values, we know the y value is going to be the positive version of that. So negative two, the absolute value of negative two is positive two. So negative two, two, that could be this point right here. Negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So my point is negative 1, 1. The absolute value of 0 is 0. So we got the point 0, 0. Uh, 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1. We got that point right there. And 2, the absolute value of 2 is positive 2. So we have that point right there. Um, domain, all real numbers. Okay, it seems to see a pattern here. But my y values, remember that the absolute value is always positive. So y values can't be negative. So a fancy way of saying all the values that aren't negative, y greater than or equal to zero. 
one more, one more to take a look at. Uh, let's go over here to the quadratic. And again, we'll create that table of values to help us out with this, going from negative two to positive two. Okay, negative two, we're gonna plug negative two in for x and we're gonna square it. Negative two times negative two is four. So we got the point negative two, four. That could be this one right there. Negative one squared, that's negative one times negative one is one. So that could be that point right there. Zero squared is zero. One squared is one. Two squared is four. And we've plotted those coordinate pairs. Again, domain, all real numbers, range. Again, none of them are negative. So y greater than or equal to zero. All right, so here's our first example problem. Identify a family of functions, directions. Identify the function family to which f belongs. Compare the graph of f to the graph of its parent function. Identify the domain and range of f. Okay, let's look at this. f of x equals 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1. And if I look at the graph, it looks like a v. If I go back onto my previous slide and I look, I'll see that I'm talking about this absolute value graph right here. Do you see how it has an absolute value in the equation on the previous slide? And look here, my shape is in fact a V. Okay, let's go back. So what family of function does this belong to? And I think we figured that out. It belongs to the absolute value graph. So my parent function, my parent function is the absolute value graph, absolute value, I'm going to abbreviate. And that looks like f of x equals the absolute value of x. And if I remember what that table of values looks like, and I go back and use that same table of values that I looked at, I can actually end up plotting some points. Can end up plotting some points here. And then I can connect the dots and I get my good idea of what my parent function looked like. Okay, so now we need to compare f of x equals two times the absolute value of x plus one to the parent function. Well, let's see here. Um, how are they the same and how are they different? Well, they're both absolute value graphs. We've already determined that. So what else is different about them? Well, if I'm looking at this graph, it looks like the blue line is narrower, right? Narrower, it looks like it's narrower than the other one. And look here, it also looks like it's been shifted up. Okay, so we've gone up. Can we be more specific? Well, this point here was at zero, zero. It looks like this one here is at the point zero comma one. So it looks like it went up one unit and became narrower. Let's take a look at another problem. So here we have g of x is equal to 1 fourth times the quantity of x minus 3, that quantity squared. I have a graph of it over here. Okay, I'm going to let you, if you needed to pause and look back at that previous thing, or you hopefully have those written down in your notes, you would know that this is, in fact, the quadratic equation. Uh, quadratic equation. And that is f of x equals x squared. That table of values, again, if I look back and, and just have that figured out already, hopefully you wrote that down in your notes, you would be able to look at this table of values. Okay, so let's put that on the graph and check it out. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, 2, 4. Okay, so if I look at that parent of function, what happens? Let's see here. Well, this guy has been moved over. Moved over how many units? It looks like it was moved to the right three units. And then what happened? Well, it also looks like it got wider at the same time. Okay, so right three units and wider. Good. All right, next problem. All right, so now we're going to change gears a little bit. So now we're going to graph the given function and its parent function, and then we're going to describe the transformations. So here's the deal, folks. When in doubt, let's make a table of values. So here we go. We got x and h of x. I like to go from negative 2 to positive 2, and I change it if I need to. I plug in negative 2 into this. Let's here. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. 0, okay. Uh, negative 3. Negative 2, I can do that. That's easy. Okay, let's plot these points. So negative 2, 
negative 6, negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 4. I think I got it. Okay. There we go. All right. So definitely linear, right? Definitely linear. And if I remember the parent function, let me change color here. Parent function, f of x equals x. And that parent function, if I remember it, if I look at the same graph, I can fill in that table of values pretty easily. Okay, what's that look like? All right. That looks like this. So what's the difference between the two? Well, if I'm comparing the parent function to this blue line, so how did the green line become the blue line? Looks like it went down four units. Okay, so down four units. So, all right. Here's another one. Negative x squared. All right, let's take a look at this. Well, I have an idea, right? This is quadratic. I can see it. I can see it in the equation, right? If I'm looking at the equation, I know the quadratic parent function f of x equals x squared, right? I also know what that might look like here. Okay, so I can get my parent function, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. All right. So let's see what this looks like. Oh, table of values for this first one. Let's do a table of values for p of x before I get ahead of myself. So that'll be p of x. So let's see here. So we'll do that same table, those same numbers for my x values. So this is funny. Negative x squared. That means take the x value, square it, and then put a negative sign in front of it. So let's see here. Order of operations, negative 2 squared. That's negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. So 4 Put a negative sign in front of it, so it becomes negative 4. Okay, then we got negative 1 squared, which is 1, times, put a negative 1 in front of it. Sometimes, guys, when I'm looking at this equation right here, I think of this as negative 1 times x squared. I think that'll help you if you were to think of it as negative 1 times x squared. It makes it a little bit easier to do the math because then you don't get confused about order of operations. You know you got to do exponents and then multiply. So let's see here. 0 squared is 0. 0 times negative 1 is zero, have one. One squared is one. One times negative one is a negative one. And then two squared is four. Four times negative one is negative four. Okay, let's, let's graph these. So we got negative two, negative four. Negative one, negative one, zero, zero. Uh, one, negative one, and two, negative four. Okay, that looks like this. I'll plot my parent function, which will go a little something like this. What happened? Okay, let's see. What was the transformation? How did the red graph change into the blue graph? Well, we call this a reflection. So it was reflected over, and we'll be specific, over the x-axis. So if you think of it like you did in geometry, right? If this was a mirror, if your x-axis was a mirror, that red line would be reflected over to the blue line. Okay. So here's where I pause, want you to pause the video. So I want you to try these. I'd like you to get a piece of paper. I'd like you to get a piece of graph paper right now. And I'd like to graph the given function and its parent function and then tell me what the transformations were, just like we did in the previous two examples. So create a table of values, sketch the graph that I've given here, and then graph the parent function. And then talk to me about the transformations that occurred. Okay, so pause the video right now. I'll be here when you get back. Don't worry. Just pause the video. No, no, no. Really. Pause the video right now. Graph these guys, and I'll be telling you the answers here in a second. Okay, so here we have g of x. g of x is equal to x plus 3. I went ahead and made the table of values and graphed it over here for you. So if you need to, do that first. And then hopefully it'll be obvious what the parent function is, that this is in fact a linear equation. The parent function is f of x equals x. We know the table of values. Hopefully we've seen it enough times by now that we can fill it in kind of without thinking about it. And if we still have to, that's okay too. Okay, and we can graph that. It looks like this. So what happened? How did the red function turn into the green function? Well, this went up three units. All right. Next, next example. All right, h of x is equal to the quantity of x minus 2 squared. Okay, so I went ahead and filled in the table of values. Negative 2 minus negative 2 is negative 4. 
and negative 4 squared is 16. That guy's not going to fit on this graph. That's like way up here someplace. Negative 1, 9 will fit, though. So we'll plot negative 1, 9. Uh, 0, 4 fits. Uh, 1, 1 fits. And then 2, 0. But if you notice, that doesn't give me what I think I should have, right? I see this x squared. And when I see this x squared, my brain thinks, my brain like automatically goes to quadratic equation. And if yours doesn't, it should. So I go to quadratic, which means I should see a nice U shape with it, right? Because my quadratic equation has a table of values that gives me this nice U shape. So um, I don't see it. So what does that mean? That means I probably want to continue my table of values for h of x, which means I probably want to go to 3. And if I do that, 3 minus 2 is 1 and 1 squared is 1. And if I went another one like 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Right? And if I went one more, 5, 5 minus 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So now I can get that nice U shape that I really should see when I'm graphing a quadratic equation. Right? That's pretty important. All right, and then I'll plot the other points for my parent function. Right? You're used to seeing these by now. And it looks like this. Okay, so how did the red one change into the blue one? Well, it looks like it just went to the right two units. Okay, so here's our last one. n of x is equal to negative, the absolute value of x. And I went ahead and created my table of values. So I got negative 2. Oh, okay, let's talk about how. So I think of this as negative 1 times the absolute value of x. So negative 1 times the absolute value of x. That's how I'm coming up with my values. So I know negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So when I plot these, when I come up with this, I get my v-shape, but if you notice, my v-shape is pointing downward, as opposed to what it should be with the normal parent function, which is pointing upward. Okay, so how did my green line change into my blue line? Well, again, if I think of it as this like yellow, it flipped over, right? It flipped over. We call that reflected. So again, it was reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so out of this lesson, you should just be able to identify the parent functions, take a look at them, graph some very, very basic ones. If you need to create a table of values, great. If you need to look at like Desmos or something funny like that, that's okay too. No problem. Very basic understanding of identifying the parent function from an equation or from a graph and then telling how what you're looking at is different. If you can do that, you're golden. Okay, we'll talk more in class. Thanks for watching.